gentleman with the green vest. Okay, I have a quick question. This takes us all the way back to the beginning. Uh, we heard that the, uh, the spill was directly linked to what appears to be a contractor oversight or it may be an error. Uh, what I'm wondering is, is there a process going forward whereby someone, uh, and that could be include the city, determines who is legally liable for this, this, this discharge? Obviously, there's a potential for financial damages. I, I expect that that's probably the next step for some folks. And so I'd like to hear from you, uh, just if there's a process, what is it? going forward on this matter in terms of who is directly responsible for this massive sewage release? Well, uh, as I said at the beginning, we take full responsibility. It is, it is our, our plant, our pipes in the ground, regardless of why it was caused. We can count the break down one of our employees or a top third party contractor. So that obviously takes full responsibility for that. Now that doesn't mean that we're going to take full financial responsibility uh. because the contractor <laughs> still has some liability and responsibilities with us. Uh, <coughs> so, so we have been in talks with the EMC to see what we can come up with with them to handle some of these questions that you guys are talking about. Uh, we, we, we had a, the last meeting was as a matter of fact Monday afternoon with the president of the EMC. He's willing to do a lot of things, uh, and I would imagine they would be willing to put some of these bills and board Well, he, he may be, but it depends on his insurance company. Well, they've already been notified. Their, their insurance is notified. They've already taken care of all that. So, they, so what we decided how we want to approach this back with them is ready to go. So that's what I can So how can the public be informed yeah. about that process as it goes forward? Again, it, we, we, I think this group. Again, I don't know if those don't have computers. Right. All I can do right now is based on the list we put together uh, last year, I notified them of everything. Uh, not just spills, the good thing that, that we do have had. We have a EPD certification for the base, and I sent them a blast email. Well, I'm and asking this as a citizen so of I don't, don't how to get this, I don't really have an answer for how I'm going to get in touch with everybody in this room if you don't have email or a The city a has a website, system. which I actually think is quite impressive. And it would be an excellent way for notifying residents of this city who are deeply concerned about this issue. I, and so I would suggest that that might be one of the first places you look in terms of posting information and providing mean, those, meaningful like, and timely updates. The white ladies at the campground, they don't, she was saying well, they don't have a lot of communication. We do. But, there are people but you said, I, I, I don't know how to reach those folks who right. are saying that. And, and, and we can work through that. There's ways to work through that. But my question is, okay, now let's talk damages. From the county and from the citizens. Is the city of Valdosta going to put up a claim form on this beautiful city of Valdosta webpage so that we have a means of filing claims against the city of Valdosta and they can flow those claims down to the subcontractors? That we discuss a little bit. Well, I think that should be an action item. Okay. Absolutely. Like I said, that's what we had already discussed, like I said, with the third party contract because we knew we were going to have But there needs to be a means of collecting claims from the public and from the county. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm certain that will take place once we decide exactly how the procedures go on.